So in 2021, I completed marathon distance and I did it pulling a hundred pound sled behind me, literally dragging the weight I'd lost or hauling my ass as I like to think of it. Finding joy in the gym and discovering that I'm actually exceptionally strong meant people assumed and suggested that I should become a competing strong woman. But for the first time in my life, I didn't feel the need to conform to what was expected of me because of my strength. I got so much joy from doing it my way. Until the age of 40, I spent my adult life overweight, unfit, trying to fit the mould, dieting and at one point confined to a wheelchair. However, I am now a recognised endurance athlete and I coach people who feel like they can't access fitness. I believe it's never too late to find your purpose and yourself. And I want to empower other people to let go of what is weighing them down and explore finding themselves too. Everything changed four years ago when I stopped believing I would only be happy if I hit a certain size or weight and instead committed to taking care of my body because it's an amazing vessel in which I get to move around this world. I stepped away from body image and started focusing instead on what it's capable of. This is the pivotal shift that I want to share with you here today. Too much of society is focused on what we look like and not what we can do. Who cares what you look like at 20, 30, 40 or 50? I want to be the 90-year-old who is a nightmare to look after because, boy, can I still move. I want to be surfing at 90 at least. For me, old age mischief is where it's at. <laughs> that change has not only seen me go on to embrace fitness as part of my day-to-day -day life, but also push the boundaries on what my body can achieve as a now 45-year-old woman. And I know, I know, I do look amazing for my age. <laughs> it has also given me the greatest confidence to embrace who I am. And after 40 years of fitting everyone else's mould, to just be me. Despite its shortcomings when it comes to immune function, my body is pretty amazing in what it can do. I like to think that I have autoimmune diseases because the only thing strong enough to kick my ass is me. <laughs> These days, I like to set myself challenges, train for them, and then complete them. And in April of this year... Oh, we've gone forward already. Let's go back. You're probably confused as to why that was there. It will all... <laughs> It will all make sense soon. <laughs> what has a spaniel got to do with this? It's all right, it's all right. In a minute, you'll know. <laughs> so, back to this. Come on, we're doing a TED Talk. This is very serious. In April of this year, I uh, lifted, uh, I've got to get this right in American money here, £200,462 in 10 hours um, a deadlift is my favourite lift, and I did this as part of a world record attempt. In spring of next year, I will go back and I will lift just under £800,000 to set the world record for weight deadlifted in a 24-hour period. <laughs> because, why not? I mean, most people ask why, but to me, it's why not? I grew up in a cult. In my 20s, I experienced infertility. Now, most women understand the pressure of reproduction. But for me, I was raised to believe that my only purpose was to get married and reproduce. It was particularly challenging. I hated my body for what it couldn't do. And I experienced that same hatred when I first got sick and I couldn't tie my own shoelaces or brush my own teeth. I'd now in my 40s, I'd like to go back and tell 25-year-old me not to worry. It isn't her purpose. I'm sorry, ladies. Those of you who've had children will be able to understand what I'm saying here. But she'll be glad she doesn't wet herself when she gets on a trampoline or she has the freedom to explore the world around her, which she was kept from for the first 18 years of her life. While her friends moan about their breasts that resemble a spaniel's ears, mine will still walk into the room before me. Makes sense now, doesn't it? <laughs> I tell her that she will impact the lives of young people in more meaningful ways through fostering 
and becoming the crazy auntie to a multitude of children as her friends keep them involved in their lives throughout the years. I'd go back and tell the younger me, throughout your life, you will gain and you will lose weight. You will face physical challenges, but it's not forever. One day, you will see your value and things will change. Controversy created through subjects we should be better at supporting people in fuel the social media likes and shares and get heard. And this is where the problems begin to arise. People start to believe they are less capable, have less value, and their happiness is impacted because of this. So as humans, we have achieved some pretty amazing things. And when we think about those things, like contributions through science, discovery and art, you wouldn't judge the people who achieved them based on whether or not they fit modern beauty standards. It's phenomenal, isn't it? All of those things that these people have discovered changed the world as we know it significantly. But that in itself is not what's phenomenal. Where it becomes phenomenal to me is that a large part of society judge themselves as less based on body image. We can separate achievement and body image for these people, but we can't do it for ourselves. To me, it seems incomprehensible that as a society we focus more on what people look like than what they can do. Some careers, by default, get a free pass on this, whereby their achievements are not linked to body image. People who think about body image less actually achieve more, which I find really interesting. These days, if you have any presence on social media, it is impossible to escape the topic of body image. If you see an article about a celebrity, I can guarantee that it will talk about what they're wearing, whether they've been on a diet, what shape they were in. It's almost as if winning an Oscar isn't as important as what you wore to collect it or whether you'd been on a diet or looked different. <laughs> but what is a good shape? Who defines what that is? I mean, personally, I'm a really big fan of a dodecahedron, but I think that's just because it sounds intelligent and shows I listened at school a little bit. But in all seriousness, who and why? Over centuries, the definition of as a good shape has shifted dependent on influences from art and more, be it the larger bodies signifying more wealth or heroin chic being on vogue. There's no denying that body image is something we have dealt with for years. But are we thinking hard enough about this problem and how to support those who struggle with it most? Did you know that the body positivity movement was originally founded to fight discrimination and underrepresentation in film and media? It was joined by the body confidence movement, which says we should feel confident in our bodies regardless. And on the opposite side, we have the anti-fat bias movement, which stigmatizes people for being overweight. All of these movements have fed messages into the diet and fitness industry for years, spawning campaign after campaign and trend after trend based on what we think people have as the problem and how we can solve it for them. Get into that little black dress for the Christmas party, get into shape for summer, reach X size or weight and be happy in yourself. Here's the thing. <laughs> People in all shape and size bodies can have positive and negative thoughts about them. It's not something that is unique to those in larger bodies. How powerful is that to understand that we all have these thoughts about ourselves? Regardless of the shape, size, colour, age, whatever, we all will have these thoughts. It's universal. There is nothing wrong with wanting to feel good about your body. There's nothing wrong with wanting to feel confident in it. There's also nothing wrong with wanting to feel good about how it looks. Where it becomes problematic is that the current narrative is driven by those social media polarised views that we talked about before. Fitness shouldn't be solely about our physical appearance. At its core, it should be about long-term good health, both mental and physical. This is where I believe the middle ground could help us win on this. If only we held it in as high regard as those polarised views. So what is the middle ground? It's a concept called body neutrality. And at its core, it's an acceptance that we can have 
both positive and negative views about our body, but that those thoughts and views shouldn't colour our ability to take care of it. That we have so many more things that give us value, our attributes. We can also recognise that we don't have to like our bodies to take care of it. Body neutrality was first heard of in 2015, but it wasn't until 2016 when Anne Poirier started holding workshops encouraging people to understand that it's not always realistic to love your body that it became heard of more. Things like online dating, going for that job you've always wanted, making new friends and more all become easier if we take body image out of the equation. So I'm not saying it's an overnight change, but with the realistic approach of recognising we might not always like our bodies, it becomes easier to stick at things in the long term, to feel less like we're failing and more like we're learning. Now, I did wonder how something like online dating could become easier if you take body image out of the equation, but I can answer that for you now. Last year, as a now 44-year-old, I found myself in need of using online dating. It scared me because I was going to have to put myself out there showing pictures of myself as a way to engage with other people. And I, it's really important to me that someone gets to know me, my core attributes, my values, who I am. And yet here I was faced with a situation where putting photos of myself out there was my only option. Or was it? <laughs> As you can see, I found the perfect solution. When deciding what photographs to use for my profile, I focused on what makes me tick. With the exception of that first photograph, where I gave people just more than a glimpse into my sense of humour, I focused on using pictures that showed me doing things I love or brought out my personality. It was empowering to approach it from this angle. And this is the thing. There is so much power in being able to say, I don't always love or like my body, but I love what it can do. And I'm going to keep taking care of it so that it can keep doing what I love it for. One of my friends wanted to join us for a strong woman competition. She was really nervous about how people would perceive her at that event. So we encouraged her to step away from thinking about body image and focus on the experience and what that could do for her. She offered one of us a lift there because she knew that if she got to the event, she'd be more likely to take part in it. When we were getting ready, she was nervous, hiding. Didn't look like she was going to have a good time. A few hours later, she, brimming with pride, she'd uh, competed 13 deadlifts when she'd all told us she'd only do one. And I think that just go to show what fun she had there. She turned to us all and she said, I found my sport. So much was achieved by being neutral about her body that day. Now, this may sound almost infantile in its process, but imagine if you applied this thinking to things moving forward. I want you to think about something that you've really been struggling with in life, that body image is an absolute driver of how you feel. Imagine you took that away, what would change? And there is a simple exercise you can do when you leave here today that can help you with that. I want you to go to a children's play park, pick a, pick a thing, make it a swing, a slide, whatever takes your fancy, and go and get on it and have a go. And remember that feeling of sheer joy but zero attachment to your body image. Take that and apply that to things moving forward because... Being neutral about your body can change your life. <laughs>